No franchise tag on Orlando Brown, a guy they traded to get from the Ravens, and they gave up a decent amount to get him. They franchise tagged him last year. 20% raise by rule would have put him right at $20 million if tagged again. They're not going to tag him. Now, will they sign him a long-term deal? I don't know. Will they get somebody else? I don't know. But left tackles, not easy to find in today's NFL, as evidenced by the fact that they had to dra- a trade for Orlando Brown when they realized their offensive line was horrible and they needed help. So I don't know what they're going to do, Chris, if Orlando Brown ends up going somewhere else as a free agent. And I guarantee you there's going to be a team out there because this is an opportunity to tear down the Chiefs a little bit. Remember when, when free agency first started, the Super Bowl champions had to sit back in fear of the yeah, reality right. that other teams were going to target their free agents to make that team worse. Why wouldn't someone offer Orlando Brown a premium just to get him off the Chiefs? I I I, I hear you there. And you know, it, it's first off, you know, Andy Reid, he's got an eye for the offensive line. We know that. It's like like we talk about with the Steelers sometimes with like their ability to find receivers. Andy Reid's got an eye for offensive linemen. So that's where I'm always a little scared at first when I talk O-line because I go, well, who knows? Maybe he's got somebody coming up the ranks that he looks at to go, this guy I think could be a left tackle. But, you know, I, in saying that, I don't think realistically there's anybody there that's on the level of Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown is one of the better pass blocking left tackles in all of football. Uh, I would think this is more about less about a move of – like has to do something, but they don't want the franchise number on their, you know, on their cap or salary right now. And that there's got to be some confidence there from the Chiefs because of all the things you mentioned, too, that, hey, this guy wants to be here. We want him here. And they're somewhat close on a number that that's how I would take it. I don't know that I got no inside info, but, you know, I know there was the Orlando Brown thing yesterday and the Frank Clark thing yesterday. And those are two totally different things, in my, in my opinion. But, yeah, I would expect Orlando Brown to still be a part of their plans here. And this would tell me that they're, they're confident they can make this happen here somewhat, somewhat soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, and, you know, here's the reality. And this is the other side of the coin that, that you've been mentioning. Patrick Mahomes is going to be a draw for free agents who are available to come to Kansas City. He's also going to be a magnet that holds in place guys who are already there. Like, do I really want to go play for some slappy quarterback somewhere else right. when I got Patrick Mahomes making me look good because I know that even if I don't hold my block, he's going to run around and make a throw and I'm not going to have a sack registered to my name. I mean, and, 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 and oh, oh, and by the way, I may win another Super Bowl That's right. uh, and continue my legacy and maybe put together a Hall of Fame career. Those that- are all things that he needs to consider. And I'm a believer in getting paid what you can while you can but the planets have lined up very nicely for some of these guys to be with Patrick Mahomes, and that that may change the analysis. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's it. And, you know, the, the, yeah, you're in a situation right there where, hey, a, a me, a guy who loves football, if I put myself in Orlando Brown sh- Jr.'s, you know, shoes, those are some big damn shoes, let me tell you. But th- that would be one where you'd go, yeah, do I want to – do I want to go to some crap team and be the highest paid left tackle in football? Or do I want to be the third or fourth highest paid tackle in football and be in every big game known to mankind in, in the NFL over the next five to eight years? Right? That's what he's got a chance to be. And, yeah, that's not easy. And I'm never telling anybody, like you're saying, what to do with their money. And we're all for them getting their money. And, you know, he deserves it. You know, look at the list right now with guys like Laramie Tunzel making $22 million and Ronnie Stanley at 19 Trent Williams leading the market at $23 million. Yeah, he's in that class of player. Certainly every bit up there with a Ryan Ramchek who's making $19 million or Brian O'Neill on, on your Vikings making 18 and a half. So – I would think that there's going to be a number north of that that is spread out through a long you know, time that lessens the blow on the salary cap. And, yeah, this would be one, Mike, where you could file me under I'd be shocked if he's not back with the Chiefs. Again, I have no inside info there, but that, that's just the, the way I feel and kind of reading the room. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.